I'm Carl Hamilton, uh, transportation economist here at KTH. Uh, you mentioned a lot of interesting and, and uh, pro probably good, good ways of reducing car carbon uh, emissions in Europe, but there are 175 or so other countries outside of Europe, and the less oil we consume, the less coal we consume, the lower the price in the world market. And those other 175 countries will face a lower price. So at least a portion of the reductions that we make will rebound into increased demand in the rest of the world. And there is a finite amount of oil and coal in the world. Judging by the track record of humanity so far, I don't think there is enough white liberal guilt to go around for everyone. Uh, how much? So my, my question is: Isn't it fair that at least part of your agenda, climate action, should be not only on mitigation but on sh also on coping? Because I hate to be the cynical guy. Well, actually, I don't hate to be the cynical guy. Uh, but we're going to have to face some of the consequences. We're not, we're not going to reach 100%, and I think it's time we start planning for it. Yeah, then you were uh, talking about sort of if we consume less oil, then the price would be lower and it would be more attractive for others to continue to pollute. Uh, first of all, no, the demand after oil will be so big in the next many years due to growing consumption that, that still they, they are in, in all scenarios will increase uh, for a, at least a substantial number of years. But basically, of course, you are right that that shows why Europe cannot do this alone. That shows why, although it is very irritatingly slow, the international negotiations, why we have to continue to try to bring the world together in a binding regime for how to handle climate change. And as you know, some of us tried very hard to get it up to 2009 in Copenhagen. It brought us some steps. Last year, we took some others. It's a more stepwise approach. We can get sort of the legally binding deal done. But I think that there is one aspect that many uh, will not be aware of. When we did the so-called climate and energy package, setting the 2020-20 targets, 2007-8 in Europe, only Europe and Norway had set targets domestically. In the run-up to Copenhagen and afterwards in the Copenhagen Accord, more than 80, today 89 countries have actually subscribed to domestic reduction targets, including most of the G20 countries. Uh, they have actually now domestic targets. It's still not binding, but it means that they go back in the Brazilian parliament, they go back in the Indian parliament, and there they actually start to do things. And just final point on that, China uh, two weeks ago presented their five-year plan. Now they, they set a target for carbon. And they also write in that five-year plan that they know they also need a pricing mechanism. So now they will make some grand-scale pilot projects in some provinces and in some million cities on a cap-and-trade-like system. I mean, who would only two or three years back have thought that China would come up with such a thing, by the way, before the US? And now they are doing it. And it's pilot projects, but it's pilot projects for millions of citizens. So, and we are working very much with China to take care that whatever they build up is somehow compatible with what we do in Europe. But they are doing it, Korea is doing it, New Zealand is doing it, Japan is considering it, Australia has said they will do it, California, the, one of the 10 largest economies in the world, they are also making a cap and trade. So what seemed like a distant vision only a few years ago, now it actually seems that countries, when they start to deliver on their domestic target, then they also find out that it's not enough to set a target. You also have to, to get the pricing right. And then the final question on adaptation. You're very, very right, of course, how to adapt to climate change is extremely important. Also because even if we got the whole world to agree on a legally binding deal, climate change would continue to happen for many, many years. And we already now see some of the impacts around the world. So of course, adaptation is absolutely key. That is luckily one of the areas where also internationally, we have actually managed to agree on an uh, adaptation framework. Uh, 